Okay, it's time to set up our two presets for our vivid landscape subcategory. Now, our classification for landscapes are basically going to be, well, a typical landscape shot that doesn't have people in it uh, is, of course, going to fit in that category. But this type of a portrait, which is actually technically considered an environmental portrait, well, actually, this is probably still a landscape because it's so far pulled back. But something that basically incorporates a lot of landscape into the shot, like say this, is something that's really an environmental portrait, and it's something that we process more as a landscape image than we do as, say, a portrait image. So we set up a standard color and a standard black and white for portraits, and then we're going to set up a standard color and standard black and white for the vivid landscape look, which is just going to give us an additional kind of high contrast poppy look that brings out a lot of the detail in our landscape images. So let's select this image. This is the one that we're actually going to use for our tutorial. We're going to reset this to our standard import. And at this point, you guys just want to load up any of your basically images that would fit into this category, an average kind of landscape shot that you would typically shoot. I shouldn't say average because they're probably awesome pictures, guys. I'm going to say typical, a typical shot that you would normally shoot. All right. That sounds really redundant, but that's all right. Okay, so let's get started. We're starting with our standard import preset, and now what we're going to do is add a bit of contrast right to this image because we want it to pop. Okay, now we're going to leave highlights and shadows where they're at with our standard import preset, but we're going to dial down the whites to negative 20 and dial up the blacks to positive 20. We're going to do a little switcheroo here. Now what we're doing here is notice that we're pulling down our highlights and raising up our shadows, and this is basically pulling down the skies so that we can basically increase detail in the skies from being blown out while increasing detail as well in the shadows. So we're basically boosting dynamic range in our shot. Okay, now with clarity, we're going to add a bit more clarity just because this is more of a landscape image. We can serve uh, it well by adding a bit of mid-tone contrast and pulling out a little bit of additional detail. Vibrance, we're going to still leave it as plus 15 because for some shots that are already very saturated, I don't want them to be oversaturated by boosting vibrance and saturation too high. Now with our tone curve, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a slight S curve, and we're just going to add our four points in each quadrant, and then we're just going to modify. Okay, so we're going to pull it down to about here. And by the way, guys, we're starting with an image that is slightly underexposed. So if this looks a little bit dark, it's not just you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. We talked about basically not using images that are underexposed when you're creating presets because of this exact reason. Basically, when you're dialing in these settings, they're going to look too dark and you're not going to dial in the correct settings. So here's what you do. You go back to basic and you dial in what the proper exposure should have been. This image is probably one stop underexposed, and so we're going to put it up as one stop over, basically. So we're going to raise it by one stop. So now this is basically the properly exposed image, even though our sky is kind of getting blown out. This is a proper exposure based on like skin tones and the kind of the details in the rocks and stuff like that. All right, so now we're going to dial in our settings. When we're done, we're going to reset exposure back down to zero before we save the preset. So that's what you guys would do if you, say, have an image that you want to use for a preset, but it's not necessarily correctly exposed. All right, let's go back down to our tone curve. Let's just do a little bit of tweaking here. So we're just going to pull up our shadows a tiny bit. We're going to lift our midtones just a little bit more. These are midtone shadows and midtone highlights. And I'm just going to drop my whites just a tiny bit. Okay, so that looks great right there. Uh, so our final points are at 14.9 and 13.3, and then 36.1, 39.6, 63.5, 70.2, .6, and 87.5, and 90.6. That shouldn't matter much, guys, because you guys want to do your own tweaking, but just so you know our exact settings, you have them. All right, so let's go down to our detail panel. This time we're going to be sure not to do any noise reduction. We're going to leave sharpening where it's at because that's a good default setting. And then as far as lens corrections, we'll leave our lens vignetting where it's at as well. Okay, and that's it for this. We're going to go back up to our basic now. We're going to reset out the exposure to zero so we don't record that in our preset. We're going to now, I'm going to hit enter so that that takes it. Okay, now we're going to hit plus. We're going to label this as 21 standard color. All right, once again, we have the same settings, everything selected except for lens profile corrections, transform, and chromatic aberration. Now we hit create. And there is our standard color preset. So let's check this out. If I select this image next to it and I apply our standard color preset, we should have a really nice kind of poppy uh, landscape look to this shot. And that's exactly what we get. We get just a little bit of extra pop when compared to, like, say, the soft portrait look. 
But look at if we apply this to say, let's go back to one of our portraits. I'm gonna show you why you don't wanna use this preset on portraits. Let's go back to this one that we used in the previous tutorial. Well, not that one, right here. Okay, so here is our standard color soft portrait look. Uh, and we have a really nice, soft, flattering look to that image. Here is the vivid landscape look. Notice how harsh this is on skin tones. We have, we've brought out not only tons of extra detail in the skin tones, but we're also making the skin tone highlights very kind of crazy over dramatic. All right. Whereas compared to the standard color uh, soft portrait, it has a very nice, soft, flattering look to it. So that's why we kind of create these two different categories: one for a vivid look, one for a soft look. One meant for portraits, one meant for landscape. Hopefully that's all drilled in your heads by now. We have done great in creating this preset. Let's test it out on one other shot and let's take a look. So here's another one that we'd probably use this vivid landscape on. Again, we should get a nice pop out of it. It didn't apply it. Let's try it again. There we go. We get a nice pop out of the background and we can see all the extra detail that's being brought out in the image. Once again, we're leaving white balance as shot and exposure at zero because we're gonna dial those in on individual images basically on an image to image basis. Now there is one time we would actually adjust exposure into a preset and that's when the exposure should be part of the preset itself. Like say for example uh, we're creating a overly brightened kind of blown out look with a certain preset, a very soft kind of vintage blown out look. Well then we would dial in the exposure to get that blown look. If we apply this preset to an image that's say underexposed and we see that exposure says one then at that time we know that this exposure is supposed to be one stop over what a proper exposure is supposed to be. So that's kind of the system that we're using. If we're not adjusting exposure, we're saying that you should adjust the exposure to basically a correct exposure after you've applied the preset. If we have an exposure dialed into the preset value, then we're saying, okay, once you've dialed in a proper exposure to the image, now the image should be one stop overexposed or two stops overexposed or even underexposed if you use a certain preset that underexposes the image. Okay, so that's the only time we actually use exposure in our presets. Okay, great job. Let's go on to the next video. We're going to create our standard black and white vivid landscape look.